information theory. The next major guideline we are going to consider is communication theory. Communication is an essential skill in the practice of nursing. If you cannot communicate therapeutically, it is difficult to practice safety. Because communication skills are vital at all levels of nursing practice, most nursing exams and the NCLEX exam frequently contain many communication questions. Students often state that the nurse's response offered in options are not realistic representations of the way people talk to each other. They say these responses seem to be formal and sometimes even impersonal, or they say that the nurse does not have the time to just sit and talk with the client like that. However, the nurse has a special professional role, and therapeutic communication principles reflect the highest standard of nursing practice. Be very careful that you do not read into communication questions by assuming that in the real world, the nurse does not have the time to sit with the client and talk. Unless the case scenario indicates that there is some other urgent situation that the nurse must attend to, always do what is best for the client in the ideal circumstance. When answering communication questions, the nurse must put special emphasis on recognizing and responding to the client's feelings. If more than one response to the client seems plausible to you, choose the one that appears to focus on the client's feelings first. This is the essential first step to establishing and maintaining a therapeutic relationship with the client. Learning how to interpret communication questions and how to answer them correctly will increase your score on nursing exams. Students frequently report that there are a great number of psych questions on the NCLEX exam. However, many of these psych questions are actually communication questions. Clients in a test question may be described as confused, angry, anxious, grieving, or upset in some manner. Other questions may describe client behaviors that indicate that there is an emotional issue. There is often an emotional or psychological element in these kinds of questions. However, these questions are usually communication questions designed to test your therapeutic communication skills, not psych questions which test your knowledge of clients with mental health problems or are on psychotropic medications. According to the NCLEX exam test plan, the communication thread is a major component of the exam because clients in the healthcare setting may experience a variety of emotional stresses. Some of these stresses include lack of privacy or other privacy or confidentiality concerns, fear of death, disfigurement, procedures, or prognosis, anxiety related to hospitalization or potential outcomes, separation from family, loved ones, friends, and daily routines, loss or anticipation of loss and mood disturbances, such as depression related to a diagnosis or prognosis, or emotional changes related to the disease process itself. The nurse must always be alert for emotional clues and must know how to interpret the client's verbal and nonverbal behaviors. Many test questions include these clues. The nurse must understand and respond to these emotional needs of the client in all clinical areas and in any healthcare setting, not just in mental health or psychiatric nurse settings. The nurse must also use therapeutic communication skills in cooperating with other members of the healthcare team and in evaluating client care. Now, let's look at a few guidelines to use when answering communication questions. Identifying the critical elements may be more difficult than in other types of questions. When answering communication questions, it is especially important to determine who is the client in the question. Remember that the client is not necessarily the person identified with the health problem. The client is the person to whom the nurse must respond. This person is usually someone who has asked the nurse a question or done something that affects the nurse. Remember that the client may be a family member, another client in the healthcare setting, or another member of the healthcare team. So when eliminating distractors, remember that the correct answer must focus on the client 
in the question. Another important guideline when answering communication questions is that the nurse must always be in a therapeutic role. So to communicate effectively, the nurse uses communication tools and avoids communication blocks. Remember that when you are eliminating distractors, only options that use therapeutic communication tools can be the correct answer if the question has a true response stem. So in most cases, tools are correct answers, blocks are distractors. If the question has a true response stem, rule out any nursing response that fails to address the client's feelings or concerns and any response that uses a communication block. Let's refresh ourselves on what therapeutic communication tools and non-therapeutic blocks to communication are. Communication tools are mechanisms that enhance therapeutic communication. Examples of therapeutic communication tools appear on your screen now. Take a moment to review them. Examples of communication tools being silent would be sitting quietly with a client, offering self, let me sit with you, showing empathy, you are upset, focusing, you say that, restatement, you feel anxious, validation, clarification, so what you're saying is, giving information, you are admitted to room 423, focusing on the here and now, at this time the problem would be, remember, whenever identifying a therapeutic response, the empathetic response takes priority. Let's take a look at the blocks to communication. Blocks to communication are responses that interfere with communication. Examples of non-therapeutic blocks to communication appear on your screen now. Take a moment to review them. Examples of communication blocks, beginning with giving advice, would be, if I were you, I would do this. Showing approval or disapproval, you did the right thing. Using a cliché, think positive. Requesting an explanation, why did you do that? Devaluing client feelings, don't worry, nothing's wrong. Being defensive, every nurse on this unit is exceptional. Focusing on inappropriate issues or persons. Have I said something wrong? Placing the client's feelings on hold. Talk to your doctor about that. Now that you have reviewed these tools and blocks, let's take a look at a priority question that will require us to apply therapeutic communication. We need to eliminate distractors by using communication tools and avoiding communication blocks when we choose the correct response. First, let's separate the case scenario from the stem of the question. The case scenario tells us that an elderly client who is hospitalized for an exploratory laparotomy says to the nurse, do you think that the doctor can fix what's wrong with me? The stem of the question asks, the best nursing response is, Let, let's go ahead and identify the critical elements. The key words are best, the client is the client hospitalized for an exploratory laparotomy, the issue is the client's concern with his prognosis, while the type of stem is a true response stem. Let's look at and eliminate distractors. Number one, you will have to ask your doctor. We will assign a question mark to this response. It appears that the client is asking the doctor's opinion and the nurse cannot answer this. However, a very common mistake students make when answering communication questions is choosing a response that refers the client back to the provider. Usually, there is a more appropriate response that the nurse can give the client that focuses on the client's feelings. Remember that it is a communication block to address an inappropriate issue or person, in this case the doctor's opinion. Instead, look for responses in which the nurse is addressing the client's feelings or issue. Option two, you must be worried about the surgery. This option will be assigned a plus sign. This therapeutic response uses the communication tool of showing empathy for the client's feelings by putting the client's anxiety into words.
This response encourages further communication from the client. Option 3. Your doctor is the best surgeon here. We will assign a minus sign to this response. This is a non-therapeutic response which demonstrates the communication block of being defensive. It will not encourage further communication between the client and the healthcare team. Option 4. Don't worry about that until after surgery. This option will be assigned a minus sign. This non-therapeutic response demonstrates the communication block of being devalued. It is never appropriate to tell the client not to worry. In this communication question, we now have two probably wrong answers, choices three and four. One possibly right answer, choice one, and one probably right answer, choice two. We have noted that two of the four answers are plausible, but we know that there can only be one correct choice. When we apply our principles of therapeutic communication, we see that only one response addresses the client's feelings in choice two. Now we go with what we know and select choice two as the correct response. Are you ready to try one on your own? Okay, here is a sample communication question. I would like you to practice identifying therapeutic communication tools and blocks to communication so that you can eliminate the options. Let's separate the case scenario from the stem of the question. The case scenario tells us that parents of a hospitalized premature infant are told that the infant will not be released from the newborn intensive care unit today as expected. The parent states, I know I shouldn't let it get me down. The stem of the question asks, the therapeutic response by the nurse would be, let's look at the critical elements. The key words are therapeutic. The clients are the parents of a premature infant. The issue is the client's disappointment. The type of stem is a true response stem. Now we can start to look at and eliminate those distractors. Option one, that's the right attitude. A question mark will be assigned to this response. It appears that the nurse is attempting to give the client hope. However, a very common mistake students make when answering communication client questions is choosing a response that shows approval rather than giving hope. Usually there is a more appropriate response that the nurse can give the client that focuses on the client's feelings. Remember that this is a communication block to show approval or disapproval. Instead, look for responses in which the nurse is addressing the client's feelings. Option two, I know just how you feel. We will assign a minus sign to this response. This non-therapeutic response demonstrates the communication block of devaluing the client's feelings. It is never appropriate to tell the client that you know just how they feel, since one person can never truly know how another feels. Option three, you seem upset. We will assign a plus sign to this response. This therapeutic response uses the communication tool of showing empathy for the client's feelings by putting the client's disappointment into words. This response encourages further communication from the client. Option four, think positive, maybe tomorrow. We will assign a minus sign to this response. This is a non-therapeutic response which demonstrates the communication block of cliché rather than focusing or acknowledging the client's feelings. In this communication question, we now have two probably wrong answers in choices two and four, one possibly right answer in choice one, and one probably right answer in choice three. We have noted that two of the four answers are plausible, but we know that there can only be one correct choice. When we apply our principles of therapeutic communication, we see that only one response addresses the client's feelings in choice three. So we go with what we know and select number three as the correct response. Let's look at another nursing principle that we can apply to priority questions.